Will Subriel Matias walk through Liam Paro? Or will Liam Paro walk Subriel Matias into a huge shot? Now we got a lot of film to cover. We got a lot of stuff to take a look at. So we're going to go ahead and start the film study. Notice that was a right hook right there. Um, and we're going to start it by taking a look at Liam Paro and kind of figuring out who he is as a fighter when he fights a southpaw opponent. Okay, or uh, an orthodox opponent as a southpaw in the open stance. Now, immediately coming forward with the rear hand probe, his opponent gets on the line here. Very, very, very important that we see that Paro can see this coming because there's one big flaw that Subriel Matias has, and we're going to talk about it um, when you know in depth as we get to the clips and stuff. But um, one of the ways that Matias comes forward and crosses the line against his opponent is with the rear hand. It's one of his most popular probes. He'll have a, a couple of jabs, a couple of controls on the line with the stepping jabs um, kind of things. <clears throat> but he likes to come forward a lot behind that rear hand probe, usually doing a decent job uh, with his probes. Now, again, seeing the shot coming, parrying it, and looking to control some space. So all good signs from Paro here, um, fighting his very, very, very active very 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 i don't want to say exactly elusive he's on the line with him um but the guy is uh putting on a lot of pressure right for nine seconds into the round okay now paro timing him as he gets to the front foot this is a very 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 important idea okay timing him as he gets to the front foot i'll talk about why that's so important okay again getting to the front foot and when he gets to the front foot pushing paro off the line penduluming here a little bit right there and we're going to talk about that again later but again the rear hand probe coming from um from mr kim here and the right hook coming now very 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 important okay now uh not the greatest peel not the greatest get off the line ducking under the line or below the waist timing a shot here now he's not getting hit super clean okay but super matthias a little bit faster than this guy okay but i do want to point out that he is throwing a rounded punch here and he's trying to counter this straight punch okay slipping toward the front foot as his opponent comes in here and throwing this shot here this is the kind of shot i think might be very 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 effective against someone like Subriel matias because of the fact that Subriel matias doesn't move his head a lot okay a lot of the time he stays kind of head straight up on the line he does have moves where he'll move it and again good 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 ish counter from uh, liam paro and all this is pretty good in the first 30 seconds okay <clears throat> timing and getting to the front foot now this is going to be one of liam paro's biggest strengths okay uh Super Matias is kind of a plodding, a little bit of a fighter, kind of a plodding forward kind of fighter as we take a look here. A little bit fast combinations, but coming forward, a little stepping jab here into a one, two, three. But a lot of his stuff, as you can see, is he getting to the front foot. It, he's not easy to interact with, but timing and working with him as he gets his weight to the front foot is a... Uh, it's possible. It's not one of those things that he's so crazy good at. You know, we're going to talk a little bit about it later. But again, timing him as he gets to the front foot. Uh, timing him as he gets to the front foot. A um, little pull counter here. And we're going to talk a little bit more about this timing and stuff as we go on. But again, we just want to get a feel for a little bit of this kind of stuff that... Um, Mr. Paro is kind of good at. Now, circling, right? And, and we're going to be calling it at Fouts Boxing Theory. We're going to be calling it stepping around our opponent, right? And circling our opponent and stepping around them. Very similar ideas, but we want to be circling, not just circling, but stepping around our opponent. Uh, we want to kind of stay in range-ish, right? We don't want to move too far away because notice he, he moves so far away that it doesn't take any time for Kim to close the distance okay so uh it's very important that as you're moving around you don't move so far away from your opponent that you lose control of them okay because he didn't actually gain anything in this moment okay and if you guys want to learn more about this idea more about drills about learning about stepping around your opponents or circling or 
uh, things like that. Check out the Fouts Boxing Combat Academy, uh, or the Fouts Boxing Academy. Um, here's a couple of the reviews here. I've never worked with Fouts before, but even my first few days, I learned a ton. Unique drills and experience to help you grow. I recommend it to everyone. Yada, yada, yada. There's another one. Um, I've been working with this gentleman for, for a while, and um, you know he had his first fight under me, and uh, looks really good. Uh, really excited to continue working with. But anyway, all that stuff. Check it out. There are over a hundred unique drills and not just unique like individually because there's a hundred different of them but they're unique to my st my style and my theory um, about fighting and again styles make fights right so um, if you guys want to come learn the Fouts boxing style it's the most brutally efficient way to learn how to fight um, but also the drills they are also going to be a progressive nature so if you don't even know that much about boxing um, you don't have that much experience the drills are going to start off very easy they're going to teach you about learning how to move your body transition your weight it's very simple stuff and then it slowly starts transitioning into high level boxing and stuff and before you know it you're doing really 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 high level stuff um, and it's really simple it's really easy and it's a very very gradual build up um, and then once you get to the highest level there's uh, again uh, expert striking okay now I'm the, also the first coach in history to be able to figure out exactly how power punching works um, and uh, with my two foot punching theory and my two foot punching style okay um, I can teach anyone how to punch hard but not just how to punch hard how to punch exactly as hard as you can and then how to improve it Okay, improve your power, improve your speed, and really teach you what snap is. And all this is going to be available in the Fouts Boxing Academy if you guys want to check it out. Uh, it's 20 bucks a month to sign up. It's 100 bucks for a six-month subscription, so you save a bunch of money there. And then if you want a one-year, it's 160 a month. So 20 bucks a month gets you, uh, you know, one month at a time, or you can do a whole year, and it comes to about 13 bucks a month. Okay about 13 bucks a month for a year of coaching okay um, access to all the drills and while you're doing them there's gonna be Fouts boxing schools to kind of teach all of boxing okay there's gonna be no secrets everyone is gonna know exactly how all of boxing works and you're gonna learn it through Fouts boxing the greatest coach of all time and I'm gonna prove it and I'm gonna prove it you're gonna come you can watch people progress people are gonna be posting their drills so that they can get better you're gonna see people slowly progress and become you know animals okay so anyway all that stuff Founts boxing academy it's going to be the greatest thing um the greatest co boxing coaching platform ever ever okay ever um but there's going to be no secrets everyone's going to be learning everything um and if you guys don't want to post you just want to join um you can watch in the background you can watch all the videos you can train by yourself until you're comfortable to join in send some stuff in but if you get stuck on some stuff, you know, you need to send some stuff in to get better, send it in. Now, uh, it also comes with a one year subscription. If you guys want private coaching, every time you guys send in videos, you want it, boom, you need, you need coaching. You're like, how do I get better? It's 400 bucks a year. You'll be added to the same discord. You'll be able to look, look at all the same drills. You'll also be able to do all your work privately. If you want, you can still post your, your training to the discord. Um, which I, I highly recommend. I'll still be posting some of your stuff too, um, but uh, but if you want your your stuff private, you can be you can have it private, okay? Uh, but that's only available to the the full the four hundred dollar tier. So anyway, back to the film study, okay, guys? Okay, because uh, Liam Paro, I think uh, there's a there's a universe where he might be able to maybe possibly Blair Cobbs. Subriel Matias. So let's kind of get into it and talk about it. So very active with the control here and the one twos, blasting onto the line here, pop, pop, throwing a lot of power punches early. Um, and again, just like he got that knockout against Brock Jarvis, I want to say something very interesting that four out of his last four out of his last six fights have been knockouts. Now, so have the last four out of the last nine. But four out of the last six is very interesting if you look at it in that way, because usually your competition gets more stiff as you get better, right? So he's knocking out better opponents on average. So it's really an interesting idea. You know, not that Brock Jarvis looked all that great, you know, very strong, and, you know, all that stuff. But 
didn't look like a great boxer. Good control of the lead hands here. Now, this is going to be very important fighting Super Matias because it's going to be very, very difficult to sneak up on on Liam Paro if he's controlling the line and he's controlling with the lead hand when Matias does look to snap on him and attack him from that lead hand control or from that controlled position it does look like Liam Paro will be able to escape the line now getting put to the line peeling as his opponent again if you watch the rhythm he's forward back he's off the line right and now he's gonna peel off the line to escape that little timing so again some really good stuff from Liam Paro, right? And now getting planted when the shot comes. Uh, coming back with the hook. Now, this is really interesting because Matias, he has very fast hands. There are times where he will use his active guard and move his head and do some clever and interesting stuff. But for the most part, he doesn't really move his head all that much. Now, his opponent's getting on his line here, catching him with a rear hand probe. And this is very interesting because, again, as his opponent gets to the front foot, he's timing with a rear hand. This is going to be one of the most important things for Liam Paro because one of the most efficient ways for Matias to come forward is through his rear hand probe. He does a decent job with his active guard crossing the line a little bit, but very, very small amounts of head movement uh, when he does. And again, we have a lot of clips to talk about with uh, Matias, but... The fact that he has a little bit of parity here, and he's not going to get stuck on the back half of his line, controlling the line with his lead hand instead, and he'll be able to make this attack, means that sometimes when Matias does throw a shot at him, he'll be aiming at the back half of his line, not when he crosses and counters him with this shot. That'll give him a little bit of extra space against the pressure style that is uh, Matias. Now, throwing a rear hand probe, he kind of came straight back with this pull. This is not exactly how you want it, but... The fact that he can throw that shot sometimes and defend it is going to be very, very, very important um, when we get to the clips on Matias. And again, coming in with the hook here. Now, when we take a look at this clip, it's very, very, very important that we understand, number one, his hands are not really up. Okay. Now, his opponent, Kim, his hands are like really low, actively quite low, you know does a good job of parrying this shot does a good job of countering but take a look at that second rear hand from kim touch touch here now it's really interesting because Subrio matias he does have decent structure he does do some decent things correct with his striking again um if you guys want to know all the things that you're supposed to do with all your striking if you guys want to learn check out the Fouts boxing combat system if you guys want to check out the Fouts boxing academy and learn it from there um check it out if you guys want to learn all by yourself Fouts boxing combat system has all the drills in there as well you can learn completely by yourself um but but there are some rules that matias does not play by okay and it's moving his head across the line um, and adding head movement to his striking is one of those things. Now, he does have super quick hands. Unusually fast and, you know, thudding kind of shots. And I do think that this is one of those moves that he can and does do where he'll throw the same hand kind of a couple of times in a row. I don't think he shifts forward as much. Um... But this is a kind of shot that he may look to take advantage of. Um, and again, we're going to take a lot of looks at those clips from um, from Matias as well. Oops. Okay, that is the next one. All right. So, getting on the line here. And again, Mr. Paro very explosive ish in the first round committing to throwing a big huge hook here now we've seen paro counter with his lead hand now he's getting on the line and countering with his rear hand okay again getting on the front foot here boom timing him bah he is getting smacked here right and subrio does have a decent hook okay it's a decent hook um once he gets planted and gets on the inside and he's ready to let stuff go, it's crazy, right? But sometimes it does take him a minute to get going with that kind of stuff because he does have to get planted and get in position, um, even though he doesn't use, you know, Fouts Boxing position one and position two, okay? Anyway, 
decent shot. Not the best uh, follow-up. Okay, now again, the guard here. This is going to be a huge problem for him because Matias loves to throw those very, very, very fast and sharp hands, and he's very, very quick with them. Now, we take a look at him penduluming forward. Very, very, very important. As soon as he gets on the line, we take a look at Kim. Back foot, front foot, back foot, pendulum, front foot. Boom, boom. Gets hit with a one-two. Now, one, two. A little bit of a pull right there, recontrolling him. Boom. Very explosive. Turns off the line. Not the cleanest inside stuff, right? This is not what you want to be doing here is uh, pivoting on the front foot here right in front of your opponent. He really didn't get off the line here, and he's in position to be hit. And Matias is like a pretty good inside fighter. And we're going to take a look at a lot of his inside fighting stuff, a lot of his little tricks. He's very sneaky. But again, look at him getting on the line. And like in this very small 12-second clip, he jumped on the line and threw basically a 1-2 like five or six times. Right? Maybe it's only four. Who knows? Whatever. But it was not very much time that went by. And it shows that he, you know, he's in good shape. He's strong. But if he learns to spread this out, he'll have much, much, much more success against Subaru Matias. Rather than gassing himself out, trying to steal points here. Oh, jump on the line. Boom, 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 boom. Every time he gets on the line. Especially because he doesn't want to wind up in a position where after he throws it, he's too tired to get off the line. He doesn't have enough to peel or defend himself after throwing, so he has to tie up. He doesn't want to put himself in a position where he's throwing out these snaps so that he has to tie up and try to rest on the inside. Because Subaru Matias, and again, we're going to talk about some of his little tricky stuff on the inside. He's so good on the inside at not getting clinched. Okay, um, that utilizing that very classic, you know, late 90s, uh, early 2000s uh, boxing style where people are trying to just jump on the line, throw some random combination and then grab and hold. Right. Um, that was a very popular style. It's, it's just not real boxing. Right. But it just so happens that Matias is pretty good. He's pretty good at fighting that style and not getting um, held and clinched. Now, coming forward again, decent control of the line here. Decent control of the line, decent peeling. He has good control. Gets his head off the line of this right slips. He kind of gets hit, which sucks for him. This is terrible, though. This is terrible. Again, he's eating shots here, eating shots here on the inside. Um, again, he threw all those punches, and now he's like, having to find an opportunity to rest and he's trying to find it on the inside where he's holding instead of controlling and peeling controlling and peeling right getting kind of stuck in this position and again i can't tell maybe he's throwing that right hand right there or that left hand maybe he's throwing it to the body and it's not supposed to be this wrapping thing but either way after throwing this punch right again one of the biggest flaws that paro has is his post punch defense is very poor you know, a lot of times, let's take a look. Well, we'll see later. We have a lot of clips to go over, so let's kind of speed through a few. So, decent, controlling the line, controlling the line here, getting an attack from his opponent. Again, this is one of the things that Super El Matias is going to do quite often. He's going to do it with the lead hand and the rear hand. And basically a pull counter, getting back on the line here from Paro. So pretty good awareness of the line, getting on and off re-attacking the line, re-controlling it, getting on the line with this hook. Now, again, I think this hook is going to be extremely, extremely important for him, but also not getting stuck on the line after he gets that type of offense off, Okay, getting off the line, making sure that Matias is not able to follow up. Now, again, he's bouncing in and off the line, and now he's stuck here. Didn't have any post-punch defense, didn't peel, didn't get off the line. <clears throat> And this is exactly one of those things that Matias is usually pretty good at. This guy absolutely does not know how to do. Okay, He stops taking a step back, starts wrapping his arm around his head um, instead of using that space that he created to punch. And Matias is way better right there. So again, the, the sheer volume of, of Liam Paro, I think, is actually going to 
get in his own way in spite of the fact that that's one of the cooler and more interesting things about him. Now again, we take a look at this clip and we talk about looking at his guard. He doesn't really have his hands up protecting the line, right? So if his opponent gets on the line and says, ah, and explodes into a shot here, if Paro didn't have his hands guarding the line, just in the way, right? It doesn't have to be super anything in particular like, oh, it's not your block, right? But it's just in the way so the straight punch can't get you. Um, that means that at some point, if he sneaks up on him and he just does his absolute fastest bow and arrow straight right hand. And again, I think that um, that the bow and arrow concept is a very, very, very important idea uh, for people to focus and latch on to, not, not latch away. Um, you know, there's a time and place for everything. And sometimes, you know, I don't know if you guys have ever heard that uh, Dave Chappelle skit, right? His friend, uh, was his friend named Chet? And he's like, um, I think I'm going to race him. Well, so then I got to race, right? Sometimes you got to race. Okay, sometimes, sometimes you're just going to try to be faster. And in this point, you know, I think that there's a lot of, a lot of times where him having his guard down makes it easier to race. There's more holes. There's more spaces where you're like, yeah, maybe I'll get him. And in this case right here, uh, getting him with a very clean shot. Now, again, after he gets hit, one of these big flaws that Paro has sitting on the line. What exactly is he doing here? Why does he want to sit on the line? Why doesn't he go back to his stepping around of his opponent, circling? Okay, why doesn't he get off the line and just allow, not allow this guy to throw these punches, right? And again, it's just like a fundamental flaw, a little bit of, I think personally, just the way that Liam Paro kind of organizes his idea about what he's trying to accomplish in his fight right and one of the things that i think that he needs to actively avoid mr paro now again getting on the line boom boom if he's too tired or if he throws his punch with too much momentum and not enough snap look at his back leg shifting forward okay he's compromised his position and uh, he's not guarding the line with his rear hand in this next beat he's too slow here no post punch defense no peel no nothing and again if he's getting on the line here, Matias is so much better here at guarding the line against punches. He's so much better at seeing, even if you do get him, because sometimes Matias is kind of easy to hit, you know, but he's still pretty quick sometimes countering here as well. So this is going to be a really, really, really important position for us to look for. Um, and again, can't just let him throw shots and eat shots. Can't just crowd uh, somebody like Matias. You got to use the lead hand control. Okay. Now, again, once he gets a little bit tired, you know, a little bit of his game changes. Now, this is a little bit of the kind of stuff that Liam Paro needs to do. Controlling him here with the jab sucks that he's getting hit here, but he has to maintain that distance and keep him off of him. Now, again, this is not bad here. But this pull counter like motion, getting on the line with the one, the two, the punch comes. Now, this is really important because this just goes to show how poor his post punch defense is going to be after throwing his rear hand. And even though he kind of clobbers this guy here, right? Mr. Mr. Jarvis, boom, boom, watch his back leg. Didn't even look bad, right? Didn't even come forward, boom, got him. So maybe it's better, maybe, okay? But um, this defense here, right? If we take a look at this clip, he's still just on the line after throwing it, right? Coming right out of that position if another punch is coming. Like there's still flaws, but this is gonna be something he really needs to work on, uh, especially because Matias is so fast. But um, very interesting style of pull counter there. Right, very interesting style. Um, obviously, big flaws. 
getting on the line with the one two rolling under boom boom very good pull counter and then again getting hit again trying to peel trying to get off the line after that shot um, but not again super successful boom getting chased again now again once he gets tired once he stops a b c and d again paro does this stuff where he tries to body up with them and he doesn't do it correctly he doesn't uh close that gap now jumping on the line with the hook here boom very very interesting right getting lead foot dominance we're going to talk about the significance to this a little bit later but um beautiful hook beautiful now we talked about it just briefly jab pendulum hook okay now Matthias, his pendulum steps are like a little bit different. He doesn't always have super sharp ones, okay, where um, he's really cutting the ring off. He's more looking to kind of walk onto the line with you. You know, and it's a really interesting piece that he's missing because it's very, very similar to like Adrian Broner, if you guys watch that film study, um, where there's not a lot of cutting the ring off, sharp stepping stuff. Um, in spite of the fact that he can get to the line really quick with his rear hand probe, he's significantly better with it than Adrian Broner. It allows him to uh, cut the ring off. It allows him to break the distance down between him and his opponent with an attack, you know, and threatening his opponent in a similar way as a rear hand or a jab, right? In a very, very similar idea. But, um, It'll be interesting to see if he'll be able to intercept him with this hook. Now, I don't think that Matias is going to be looking to get so much lead foot dominance as much, um, but throwing that punch, I think that that'll be how he crosses the line, whereas he's trying to get there with a pendulum step. And I do think that this is going to be a very, very, very important punch for us, for us to pay attention to. Okay. Now, again, great strategy here. Don't hold your hand on his head, but walks him into a good shot. Okay. Walks him into a good shot. Again, it's only been two seconds. Why does he want to throw such a hard shot again? It's only been two seconds. Again, doing a decent job. Okay. Doing a decent job. He's more than capable. He just showed a few different ways to attack his opponent once his opponent steps onto the line with him, all in the span of like five seconds. And then stops peeling and then winds up using all that energy and sitting on the line, you know, and allowing, right, someone to find him. Again, decent boxing from Paro, getting off the line after all these shots, creating a little bit of space, you know, and this is one of those things that he really, really needs to do is slow the pace of the fight down. He cannot allow Matias to put really good pressure on him. And again, is he going to duck below the waist? Is he going to hold? Is he going to run? And he doesn't want to use any energy. So what does he do? He decides to sit on the line and look at him and let, let this guy tee off. You know, good peeling off the line right there. Good job. Got him to kind of bait and throw that shot. Whoops. Now, again, this is going to be a very common punch for Matias to throw. And again, look at the position that Paro has put himself in, just kind of eating those shots for no reason. And again, his his um, his tendency now, good hook, very very interesting. The one two three, this is something that he's pretty quick at one two three. Um, so we'll see if um, Matias looks to counter the rear hand and walk into the hook because again, um, with that knockout on. Uh, Brock Jarvis um, his structure looks a little better he looked a little bit stronger you know so if he can make a connection like he's making here against Matias early maybe hurt him you know now I don't know if um, he's as big of a puncher as Ergashan because Ergashan was just you know some of those things were really landing they were really big shots 
So I'm not sure. I don't think so because that guy's, you know, like 5'10 and a half and he's like all muscle. But um, I do think that in the last couple years, um, again, you want to pay attention to the fact that um, he's not going to knock this guy out here. But he does wind up knocking out four of the last six opponents that he has. Now again, the bodying up again will wind up being very, very detrimental to him. Pay attention to this. this is very, very important. Little leaping shot here to the inside. Very dangerous. He's stepping on his foot. But the fact that he's going to be throwing stuff like that when he's already so close, again, this is one of those moves that Matias is not that good with. Okay? Jumping on the line with a controlling shot. And sometimes Matias... <laughs> Sometimes Matias can be kind of easy to control. Okay, and we're going to talk a little bit about that as well when we get to the Matias stuff eventually tomorrow. But again, look at this decent boxing from um, from Paro. Now, I want you guys to pay attention to the funny, interesting, active guard. He could be doing anything. Look at how well it's it's working. He wasn't even throwing any punches. And that's how difficult it was to get control of Paro, right? Paro threw a couple punches at this guy's active guard. He just kept moving his head. And for some reason, that that told Paro it was time to hold and clinch, which is a very, very, very bad sign for him in the third round, okay? Now, excellent shots. Again, he's drowning right there, and he makes up with it somehow with some left hooks here. So again, this puncher's chance that Paro has, you know, I definitely think that it's there. But I also think that there's a shot where if he doesn't do stupid shit like sit on the line after he jumps on the line and throws a one-two, if he doesn't go bop, bop, and stay here in this dangerous position and let this guy just tee off, there's a... There's a an amount of contact that he can give his opponent where he won't he won't get tired. No, he's still going to get tired, you know, but it'll be a manageable tiredness, right? Now again, this is going to be playing a huge a role in the fight too. Um again, Matias is much 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 more difficult to grab and hold, but if this guy starts ducking below the waist and holding and it's difficult to hit him, there's a world where he could duck below the waist and hold and not get hit by Matias and do something like this. Swing around. Get out of here, son. What are you doing? Huh, huh. Right? Here's that rear hand probe getting under it. And again, what's he trying to do? Tie him up a little bit. Again, the one, two, three here. One of the better moves that Paro has. You know, and I do think that he will be able to catch Matias with it and early. Again, another hook. And then why is he staying here? What gives, bro? Again, some of it is just bad strategy. Is he expecting to knock him out? Gets on the line. Two, three. Really good shot. Gets under. Does kind of eat that one from the combination. And again, Matias is a combination puncher, so he's going to be leaving his head in one position and just letting his hands go. He may be throwing three punches or four punches. Okay? But all these types of sequences, they cannot be happening for Liam Paro. Except, man, just over and over and over again. Coming back with that hook. Now down, up, good pull counter, off the line a little bit. And some of the sequence, you know, looks really good, right? Boom. Gets on the line, controls him, two threes him. Here's the counter, gets under it, lands a body shot. Beautiful work here. Again, sits on the line. He's not exactly admiring it, but he doesn't know what he's supposed to be doing. Now, combat happens in three phases, by the way. I'll just tell you guys a little bit. Yeah, they get on the line. And then you're going to make all your attacks or your defensive moves. And then you get off the line. Okay? Every drill in the Fouts Boxing Combat Academy 
is, uh, or the Fouts Boxing Academy, is uh, designed with this in mind, okay? All the strategies, all the ideas, okay? It's an extremely important idea, okay? Now, this is, yet again, also a place where I don't know if Liam Paro is going to be allowed to hold, okay, and do funny and interesting things like this. Um, because it's illegal, right? And this is going to depend on the officiating, right? Now, I do think they might be in um, Puerto Rico. Good rear hand, good under this shot, not a good block here. And again, very fast hands from Matias, and then a good counter, right? Overall, this is a manageable pace, though, okay? Now, this sucks for him, okay? I really think that if Matias is allowed to throw combinations at Paro, Paro has almost no chance to win. You know, Paro has to be elusive. He has to get off the line. He has all the skills. He has all the ones, the twos, the this, the that. You know, he can get on the line with a couple of different interesting ways. Boom. Gets on the line with the one, two. Pulls the counter. Boom, boom. And then again, tries to hold. Tries to grab. And this is part of the strategy that cannot happen. Okay, he cannot be stuck on the line fighting Matisse on the inside. Especially in the ninth round. Late in the fight. Now, again, catching him with a hard shot. And again, this is so interesting because if Paro survives the whole fight, right, or maybe Paro just barely has enough power to hurt Matias. If he hurts Matias a couple of times, now, we're going to take a look at Matias' defense and stuff and talk about it, you know, all that stuff, but, but being able to do all this stuff and even just this late in the fight, being able to catch a guy this hard... You know, it might be enough to win the round. And if he ever drops him, right, getting a 10-8, right, hurting a guy is almost enough to win the round, just automatically, right? And if you just hurt a guy three times randomly, you don't even have to knock him down to win three rounds, and then you outbox him three rounds, right? That's half the fight. Now that's, you know, obviously a tall order, for sure. For sure, okay? But just thinking about it mathematically, one, two, pull, one, two, leaping shot, circling, stepping around his opponent instead of sitting on the line in front of him, right? A much more manageable strategy. And then again, timing him, right? Beautiful shot, getting onto the line with him again, boom, boom, again. Is he going to be allowed to do this after he expends all that energy to, to throw those kinds of punches, right? Is this going to be the, the standard case of the fight? Now take a look at the framing that he does here. Boom, boom, tries to grab. Look at how poor his defense is. Again, getting under those shots, very similar to after he threw that shot. He did manage to execute a pull counter, even though it was an ugly one. And, but now he's, instead of countering when he comes up, he's trying to grab and hold when he comes up because he used a very similar technique and now getting stuffed here. And again, Matias is very, very good at this. Boom. Very good at that stuff. Again, very good. And this is all a bad, bad, bad sign. And again, Matias, I believe he would get that control and he wouldn't have allowed that there at all. All right. Now, the last clip, again, excellent shot on the inside here. Excellent shot on the inside, weaving through the line here beautifully around this guy. Holding. Is he going to get away with it? Is he going to be able to spoil the fight? Because he's landing great shots. He's doing a great job of scoring. Boom, boom, boom. Hook. Shove him around. Don't give him any space to punch you. Keep running. Get on the line. Boom, boom. Tie him up. Oh, if he doesn't tie up, he's just going to lose in points, right? And then again, another huge shot. So this is a very interesting fight because if this guy has the power that he had to hit Brock Jarvis and knock him out in the first round and he carries some of that with him all fight long, 
like he did here, he may have an opportunity. Okay, now we're going to take a look. We've got about the same amount of clips to look at for Matias. Now this rear hand coming, just over the guard, kind of, almost getting him. And now the hook, okay. Now again, not the most active of guard from Matias here. Okay, and this is very, very, very important as he's getting on the line. Okay, now look at him trying to parry that shot. He caught it last time. Now look at it just coming around the guard. This is the first really, really, really bad habit that I think that Matias has. Now, in the open stance, he's really good at using his hands to catch punches and stuff. But in the clo in the open stance, or in the closed stance, I mean, he is. But in the open stance, okay, Boom, boom. You see him throw this rear hand shot here? He threw that shot, and look at the parry from this guy, from Jarvis. Okay, now he's like, okay, cool, boom. Now he goes with the hook instead, and he went round with this shot, drops him. Is he expecting a round shot? You know? More importantly, this is a consistent move that Jarvis can do. And I do think that Matias does have a habit of trying to catch punches. Um, that he thinks are going to be straight and I think it may backfire on him a little bit okay now this is his head movement here rolling big roll under the line notice he got hit the first time he just starts the roll boom gets hit once before he finishes the roll gets touched another time has to block on his way up again it's a really slow roll that's not a good roll <clears throat> now again the right hook, I think, is going to be very, 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 very valuable. Now, if you're thinking about beating someone like Matias, okay, now, I want to share, like, a little bit of an, a little story thing. I remember when I was, like, learning boxing, and I was like, man, I want to be a pro and all this, you know, stuff before I got injured. And I remember thinking, um, I remember watching this guy. Um, watching this guy uh, fight against, uh, he fought Kostya Zoo, he fought uh, Ricky Hatton, he fought, man, he fought a bunch of guys. And I remember just thinking, I just never want to fight a guy like this. And his name was Ben Tacky. And you would just see him eat haymakers and haymakers and just like huge, massive punches. And I remember, you know, myself being a puncher. Like, the scariest thing is, like, man, I caught that guy. I caught that guy clean, and he's still coming, you know? And you're just like, oh, God, uh, how many times am I going to have to hit this? Is it going to be enough? Am I going to get – am I going to wear myself out beating on this guy? No. I don't think you beat Subrio Matias. I think you outbox him, Okay. And I think making sure that you don't get stuck on the line with him for more than one beat. Now, as this guy approaches the line here, let's pay attention to what he's doing. He's getting beat here, right? Now, let's read a little bit more of what Matias is doing, okay? He's going to meet him on the line here. Boom, puts his hands up. That's his first contact. Most people, when the first thing when they do when they get on the line, they just blast a jab, right? Now, um, Jukumbayev here. He can't throw a jab here when he gets to the front foot because Matthias has his hands up. It's like a foolish errand, right? A fool's errand to throw that jab. It's just going to get right into his guard, right? But Matthias is going to try to attack him as he leaves. And then as he approaches the line again, puts his high guard up, uh, attacks him again. Uh, control him. Coming. And he's going to do this thing where he's going to be kind of meeting him on some of those timings. Now, take a look at Jukumbaya trying to stop um, Matias from getting to that position. He doesn't want him to get on the front foot and get that high guard going and then be able to pick him off as he exits the line. Okay, so here he is, made to the front foot, gets his high guard going. Boom, there's first contact. You can buy a feint him, pushes him off. There you go, meets him, and again, beats into the position, and that's just how quick he is. Okay, just beautiful work. Again, meets him to this position. And Jukumbayev is going to try to throw a hook, but boom, he's just getting picked off right on the inside. And it's just so small. 
It's just so small, but he gets to the planted position, boom, beats him, bop, and gets off the line. Just so quick and so sharp. And this is really important. Again, one of those things that we talked about with, what's his name, uh, Liam Paro. He doesn't bring his hands up. So look at how Matias is like, okay, I know he's going to, I know he's going to open up here. Wow. Got him. And then off the line. It's just this brief timing, you know, it just reads him like a book. Beautiful, beautiful boxing. Rear hand probe. Now tiny shift from his opponent. Excellent hook. Now, again, the hooks against, uh, against Matias, I think are going to be extremely, extremely important the lead hooks, the controlling hooks. And again, I think that Paro needs to be fighting Matias one punch at a time, right? Like, look at all the good the good work that uh, Jukumbayev did there, landing one punch at a time. He could be circling. He could be moving. He could be... You know, he could be filling some of that space uh, with anything other than getting stuck on the line with Matias. Now again, Matias is on the back foot, bringing his weight to the front foot here, surprises him with a little touch here, and then another touch here, right? Again, very slick, very sneaky, bop, bop, just touches him, and I think that's one of those things that he's pretty good with. Now check this out, very interesting, pushes him back, bop, got him. So Matias is here, all the way to the front foot of his line, Jukumbayev is more on the back half of his line, right? And now as he comes forward, boom. Now again, I don't like this parry here in the open stance, right? Steps around him as he's on the front foot and steals a couple of shots. Very, very, very sneaky. Now this is one of those really, really sneaky things, right? Because I don't know what Jukumbayev thought he was going to do when he got to the front foot. Did he think he was going to grab him? Did he going to throw a punch? Is the hole blocked now? And now he's just on the front foot, and he just steps around him and controls him with a little combination. Again, the super fast hands right there on the inside make him very, very dangerous, very hard to read. Rear hand probe, not that much of a shift forward. Very important because this Jukumbayev guy did a pretty decent job, and he does not have some of those very similar flaws, right? Very common flaws of shifting forward. Okay, this is really, really, really important because he's also not sitting just directly on the line with um, with Subriol after throwing the shot, but he's still going to wind up in a position where he gets completely overwhelmed, right? And it's really, really important because this guy is not a very limited fighter. He's actually a pretty solid fighter with a very solid set of skills. Excellent shot again, meeting him on the line. Oh, met him, and now he's going to keep coming forward. Sticks, the, like squeezes that jab through. Rear hand probe, gets his defense up. Beautiful work, stepping around him. And again, it's very interesting. You know, it's very interesting to see how easy it is sometimes to navigate the outside of here against um against Subrio. He didn't even throw a hook here. Okay, now again. If you look at the pace of what's going on here, kind of one punch at a time, bop, 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 bop. Matias not really getting all that much work done. And now look, one hook. And now look, it feels like the other guy, Jukumbayev, won this sequence because he landed the best shot. Okay, so I, th I think that you know, the one punch at a time, Blair Cobb style of boxing is one of the ways that you can kind of take advantage of Matias's style, okay? Because Matias doesn't really pendulum step. He doesn't have that classic, you know, like when a, when a beginner thinks about what boxing is, right? When a beginner coach is telling you, oh, you got to be on the balls of your feet all the time. You know, those guys like uh, Coach Anthony and all of them. But you got to be on the balls of your feet. Muhammad Ali, uh, 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 you know. That traditional boxing thing, like Dimitri Bivol, right? Dimitri Bivol is a great example of what people like think boxing is. And uh, it's interesting to see that 
Matthias doesn't have that root, you know, which in some spaces is good, right? And I talk a lot of shit about the stepping jab, but you still got to be able to stepping jab and use the stepping jab variations. So it's just interesting to see that he can be so limited in this regard. Now, really good on the inside, looking at making this position one here. Does suck that he's kind of coming in with his head here, but he's kind of pushing him off the line here, making a little space here. Now, as his opponent pushed him off the line, this is so crazy, right? Because they meet here, boom, meets, sucks that he smashes him with his head, pushes him off the line, and when he's trying to get his step down, look at him follow him back with punches. Fighting off of being pushed here, you guys, it's it just shows how incredibly experienced he is because he was losing the pushing battle and then the guy was just pushing him to create space and he took all that space away with punches. Finds him on the inside. Again, notice he didn't wrap his opponent around with his arms and grab him after throwing that combination like most people do to be safe. Right? So he didn't do that. Is he blocking this shot? Maybe. Lands an excellent shot because he didn't grab and hold him yet. Kept his hands to himself. Under this shot, decent. High guard. And again, when he got on the line, he just took a step, kept his hands up. His opponent didn't know how to meet him on the line, and then he just moved into a hook after he was already on the line. He's just defending his position with his hands. Right? Oh, what are you going to do? Shoves him a little bit. And look at the control he's getting here. Pushes him off the line a little bit. Control pushes him off the line. Keeping his hands up. Is he going to explode out of a, into a one or a two? He might. There you go. Very difficult to read, right? And again, not that many holes, right? Trying to push him. Trying to push him and control him. Did a good job there. Now, eats a shot. Ooh, under this. Now, look at him get control, finding a shot now, finally feeling a little bit comfortable. Look at him pull his arm back around, get control, pinning the guy's glove, finding a little combination. And pay attention to the 2-3. That's going to be very, very, very important. And again, on the inside, right, I do think that Paro puts his hands up a little bit more, but he he still has a lot of holes, and especially I think that, that uppercut from him because I think Paro just puts his earmuffs on and doesn't really know how to block, very similar to what Jukumbayev is doing here. And I think that he'll still be susceptible to the left hook around the guard as well. So I think that 2-3 on the inside, I mean, it sounds like like almost disingenuous to say, well, I think he's going to hit him with his left hand and his right hand, man, and it's going to be sick, you know, like... But I do think particularly that 2-3 combination on the inside is going to be very, very, very effective. Now, check this out. It's very interesting because he's going to be weaving through his line here. Boom, back foot, makes it to the front foot, steals the body shot. Good shot. Pushes him off the line. Eats a shot for the follow-up. Doesn't have his hands up. Again, very dangerous with that shot. Controls him. Pushes him back. Controls him. He tries to slip off of the control. Whack, walks him into a left hook right here. Just watch that just live. It's just so beautiful. Whack. And then again, look at what he does with his arm right after he smacks him. Immediately looks to control the line and prevent him from grabbing and holding him. So again, he's going to be so slippery. Like, how crazy is it that you're fighting a guy, like, you? he's so slippery on the inside, but he's right in front of you. You can't get your hands on him. You can't control him. Now, I just wanted to show this clip. He's going to be kind of walking into this rear hand probe. Super fast, super sharp. And again, he gets this is one of his primary ways to close the distance between him and his opponent. He does have some stepping jabs and stuff, but he doesn't usually use the stepping jab to set up a right hand. He doesn't chain them together. And that means that he's coming forward with one punch at a time kind of stuff, which means if you can interact with this punch you may be able to interact favorably, right? Now, again, one of the ways that Liam Paro likes to interact with these punches, right? Doesn't matter what it is, right? Here you come, right? He walks into a right hook right here. He just fucking does. He does. Anyway, um, 
but he will throw with these guys. He will try to counter them, you know, and it it, it leaves like especially because um, Matias doesn't move his head, right? That's a fast, hard shot, but he didn't move his head, you know, easy to weave through his line. Now, again, look at how how easy it is to circle around and step around Matias, okay? Now, I don't want to say it's easy, but but stepping around uh, Matias to the right so far looks like, you know, a high-level, uh, high-value strategy. You know, it looks like Matias struggles in the open stance in ways, okay? And I think that that is going to open up a lot of hooks for him. Now, again, this is really bad from this guy. Uh, so he's going to meet him on the line here. Matias ducks down, pulls, right? He's going to get coiled and see when this guy's moving in. Now, this is really interesting, too, because this guy's moving onto Matias' line, right? Whoops, I missed the pullback here. This guy's moving onto Matias' line, right? As he gets back foot, front foot, and as he comes forward, this would be the timing where maybe a, one of those rear hand probes comes, one of those big shots from Paro, and he's getting under it and he's coiling, right? And now he kind of pushes him off here, and as he's leaving, boom, boom, he uses the coil that he had to throw this 2-3. Now this is while his opponent is trying to leave the line. Right while he's trying to exit, he tried to body up with him, and this time Matias was able to hold his position and follow up. You know, controlling him again, control because of the fact that he's shown him that he's just trying to body up and he's not throwing punches. Matias is following up and looking to attack and make adjustments. Now, I just want to, I just want to bounce around real quick to this final clip here. Again, we have him moving around. And again, look at how dangerous he is in the scramble, right? Out of, in the surprise, okay? I do think that, again, just randomly out of nowhere, there are a lot of sequences where he may surprise him with a hard shot, you know, hard shot, hard shot, you know, and even though Matias may look like he has the upper hand in some of these interesting sequences, um, his fast hands, right, and not necessarily the most amount of crazy amount of power, may give a lot of space to something like those punches that Liam Paro is doing, um, to look and feel more impressive because they these big wind up huge massive shots right now he's gonna move back on the line with with um, Matthias and Matthias immediately meets him with the two three right just like in the last sequence now again Matthias doesn't move his head sometimes he catches and rolls with punches pretty well sometimes he does sometimes right but so far it's looking like the right hook looks like a big 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 money punch against him okay now again it's really important that you move after okay i don't think that matthias follows up on single shots very well again he threw that shot he could be peeling instead of staying here to eat these two threes again bodying up pushing him off and again Look at how good Matias is at finding these shots. And immediately, as soon as he winds up getting controlled here, boom, he tries to get his body up. Punches are coming at him. Boom. Timing him with that uppercut twice in a row. Control. And again, it's just so dangerous to be that close to Matias. Two threes, three twos. Okay, I think we were here, something. Maybe shoving them off. Now, this is an interesting sequence here because if you watch it in real time, it looks really bad for Matthias. Okay, 
And this is one of those very, very interesting things about him because he's getting shoved. He's trying to fight on the inside. Take a look at his arms here. Look at him change position, get his arm on him to, to fight the shoving, right? Now that shot's coming. Boom. Here comes the counter. But he got his glove up. This is a blocked shot. Now, blocking a shot is tough, okay? He does kind of get touched a little bit here, but, you know, not a hard shot. And then this one gets completely parried. Now, this is one of those shots, if you're parrying this shot and you're getting on the front foot, this is one of those shots where if, if Paro is throwing that hook instead of a straight shot like he did against Jarvis, he may be able to hurt him, right? And we saw how, just how freely he'll let those shots go, like in the 10th round against Kim, you know, in a fight that he's clearly dominating. He's winning on the cards by a, a massive margin. And he's still just throwing huge haymakers and bombs, you know. Now, Jukumbayev has a very tough job ahead of him, right? Every single time Matias gets to the front foot, he has to decide, oh, am I going to get jabbed? Am I going to get hit with a rear hand? Or is he going to get here with a block? Or just controlling the line, right? Or just have his hands up, right? Is he just in his high guard? Every time. And then he has to decide, okay, what do I do in that position? Sometimes he's going to go forward and try to shove him. Sometimes he's going to go backwards. But as we see him get to the line in that sequence here, here, trying to get under these shots, pushing him off. Again, very difficult to tie, um, to tie him up and get your arms around him. Boom, getting on the line, getting control of that lead hand. And again, I don't think that... Um, I don't think that uh, Paro is going to be controlling the lead hand as well as as Jukumbayev. And again, Jukumbayev, I think, is a better fighter than Paro. I think his skill set is higher. I think that that uh, you know, so far, I think that Paro, you know, maybe he's getting more power. Uh, maybe he's on the Fouts boxing combat system, um, and he's getting more fit as he moves up. Maybe he moved up in weight, and maybe that's another reason why he's stronger. But um, he's throwing more punches than controlling. He does have that one where he peels. Um, but usually he's getting on the line with his lead hand down. And if the lead hand is down, when when Matias gets to positions like this, he's just going to be coming straight through with those shots. So this is not going to be the most common thing for him. But look at him forcing those kinds of moves, feinting him, controlling him off of those lead hands. Boom. It was a rear hand this turn. Again, look at him quickly getting to the block, controlling, double jab, cross block. Again, I'm not a fan. Try to block that rear hand with the cross block. But um, getting on the line and having a lot of, forcing a lot of second guessing from his opponent, right? There's so many variations. Oh, is it the lead hand? Now, Touching him with the lead hand this time, stepping jab-ish, getting to the line, touching the lead hand. He thinks it's over. Boom. Catching him with that shot. Now, the hook again. Very, very, very dangerous for Matias. And again, this guy actually throws rounded punches. You know, so he's a little bit taller than this guy. Matias getting on the line with the one and the uppercut, another one of his fan favorites. Again, very difficult to be close and get an advantage against Matias on the inside. Meeting him with the control again, not bodying up, not tying up. And look at the terrible, terrible position that his opponent has met him on. He's completely squared up. He's going to eat a right hand here, eat another right hand off the control from the shoulders, gets control again, gets coiled, boom. And again, he's just decimating him on the inside. There's just no safe places for this guy to find. And that's going to be the thing if... If Paro was going to be getting on the line with with Matias like this, walking into these shots, boom, boom, here he is going down. Right? Is this going to be the strategy to body up with him? Look at how easily he gets controlled, right? Gets his hands back to himself, doesn't fold, doesn't hold the head, doesn't 
He decides to trust his boxing, trust his inside fighting. <clears throat> Gets control, bumps him, punches him. Look at how quick that bump into punch is. Back into the bump, into a two, into a three. Now, do you guys remember when Jukumbayev was leaving the line? He was trying to leave the line after getting pushed last time. Well, this time when he bodies up with him, boom, he's going to get pushed off, right? Here he is, stepping into it, pushing him off, creates some space for that punch, pushing him off. And now Jukumbayev has already gotten hit trying to body up with him. Now he's getting hit on the way out. Boom, boom. And again, it's just really dangerous to be in this range for Paro. You know, and Paro hasn't shown any real skills that make it look like he has any capacity to fight with um, with Matias on the inside, except for the fact that he's going to just blast his weight to the ground and then explode into some big hooks. You know, and again, very, very, very important. This is like such a nuts sequence for uh, Matias, right? But when he gets to this position again, boom, head movement, no. Boom, head movement, no. Boom, head movement, no. Boom, boom, boom. If this punch doesn't drop this guy and he were to come back with a counter here, boom, and catch it right on his chin here, he's probably going out. You know, if he were to come back with his own uh, left hook or left hand. You know, and, and again, when we think about this sequence here, right? Because again, this is going to be such a huge pivotal part, right? I think that Matias' 2-3 is going to be one of his most important tools, right? And watch him throw two. Watch him throw three. But let's pause. Let's take a look at another three here. Boom, two. <laughs> here he comes, trying to throw his three. So I think Liam Paro has a shot. He has two shots at winning this fight. Okay, and I give them both 20%, okay? I think Liam Paro has maybe, if he's lucky, a 40% shot at winning this fight, okay? If he's actually, it says he's 5'8 and a half. If he's actually bigger than Matias, and Matias is only 5'8 and he's actually bigger, and he fights with an organized game plan, he controls space correctly, right? And uh, um, he uh, he does a good job of um, we're gonna call it we're gonna call it controlling him we're gonna call it walking the dog right you're gonna control him with your lead hand we're gonna call that we're gonna call that putting a leash on him right you gotta put a leash on your opponent so you can walk him right walk him like a dog. And when you put your lead hand out there, that's what we're going to call that, you guys. Fouts Boxing Theory. Put a leash on him. Let's see if we can get a leash out here. No leashes, all the inside fighting. <laughs> there you go. There's a leash. Sometimes you're going to hit him in the face with the leash if he doesn't want to put it on. No. <laughs> but um, get in control of your opponent. That first thing that you put out there, control them with your leash, all right? Um, and then you got to walk them. Tell them where to go. Okay, if Liam Paro can put a leash on him and he can walk him and he can stay one punch or two punch at a time, right? I know he's going to throw combinations, two and three punches. It's fun, man, especially if you last like one good one. But if he's not hurting Matias, then one punch and two punch at a time has to be good enough because if he uses all his energy and he gets stuck on the line – trying to blast Matias and it doesn't work. Matias, even when he's dead tired and he's been blasted in the head, can just go 2-3, 2-3, and has incredibly fast hands. So my overall pick, my final pick, even though I think that he, Paro, if he organizes his game plan, circles, moves around, puts the leash on him, walks him like a dog, finds the big shots, right? doesn't get walked into big sh into big shots himself, doesn't sit on the line and let needless punches, let the invisible scoring punches from uh, Matias happen, because he'll just throw a random 2-3 and it looks like nothing, and it's just your head's flying around, and you know out of nowhere you're getting hit by two punches here, two punches here, and falling behind. 
And it's really important if Paro's going to win, he has to not do that. Now, if Matias is going to win, he uh, he absolutely needs to be uh, Subrio Matias. 